Hello, welcome to Civilization 6. Let's pray, let's play, let's even pray. Um, episode 1. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be a leisurely playthrough. I'm not into deity level play or anything. Um, I have uh, pretty much the latest version. I don't have the latest leader pack, but other than that, I've got everything. Um, let me just show you what's in there. Cause you may want some of the mods. I use interface mods. They don't really change the gameplay. Um, but just so you know, I've got most of the Firaxis um, official things. Um, as I say, not the latest leader pack. Um, and this puts a little label on builders so you can see how many charges they've got left. It's, it's a little easier than counting the guys. Um, improved UE, basically. Um, Better Trade is a really good one. I highly recommend it. Uh, that was a fix for a bug which now long, no longer happens in the latest update, I'm told. So I've turned it off. Um, used to get 999 terms to build stuff um, when you applied a certain policy card. Um, culture, industry or something like that. Uh, but it's back now so I'm hoping it won't cause the thing to crash. Um, detailed map tax puts numbers on tax. You can see the bonuses you're going to get by sticking things there. But if you're planning in advance, slight improvements to a diplomacy. Very not much really. Um, this is good. It puts numbers on cards, so you can actually see how what the effect of the card is in numbers, like how much extra tourism you'll get by using that card. You'll see what all this is if you haven't played Civ before. You'll see it in practice very soon. Uh, more views of stuff. Um, Perfect World, is, it's a shame it doesn't work because it's actually quite good. It improved the maps a bit. Yeah, stuff, yeah. Stuff, stuff, stuff. Um, Global Relations Panel is very good. You can see who's at war with whom quite at a glance more easily. Um, a few little adjustments to hit stuff. Um, and yeah, okay. So that's what I've got in the game. So we're going to go single player. I'm going to create a new game. And I'm going to go to the advanced setup because I prefer to just choose stuff. I'm just going to up the difficulty a little bit from Prince to King. If you're new to the game, maybe try Chieftain. If you're if you're if you've played four X's before, you might manage Warlord. At Prince, the game has about the same productive capacity as you do. Up here at the higher levels, it produce, it outproduces you. So I can beat it on King, usually, if I'm playing a leisurely game. If I'm really concentrating, I can go to higher levels. But if I'm relaxed, which I'm planning to be, a King is fine. Um, I don't play on deity level. I don't want to be manically micromanaging every single point. Uh, it's not so much fun, I think. So I want to play on a map. There's lots of maps and I've added a few. But the one I'm thinking of is Continents and Islands. I find that one most interesting. Um, or I, otherwise, I don't find Pangaea so interesting. I'd like, I like, you know, a little bit of seaborne stuff. Although the game doesn't do seaborne invasions very well, I have to say. Um, large map was probably good enough. Um, all the natural wonders. World age, I'm going to randomise it. Start position balance. Uh, standard. Temperature, random, because we've just come out of the stone age. We don't know what, what the temperature is, right? Um, well, it's just what it is. Same for rainfall, random. Now map generator, that's cool. Um, if you choose matching flatland, then floods later in the game, when the global warming strikes, can go a long way inland. It, it floods a lot more, causes a lot more damage. But I'll just go for the standard one, which can be tough enough. If you're behind on science, this will get you. <laughs> uh, sea level, random. Resource quantity, probably standard. 
seems good to me. Start position link. This determines do civilizations start near their historical neighbours. I'm going to say random. I just want them not to be near their historical neighbours mostly, just anywhere. Because again, it's a different world. It's the earth as it might have been. Uh, I don't fancy... got various options here. I don't fancy apocalypse mode. That's where if you get to the end, but the global warming is happening, you're going to be destroyed by asteroid impacts. It's silly, really. I like the barbarian clans. They turn into city-states after a time. Uh, dramatic ages. It's a little tough, but it, it's a bit more fun. You either have golden ages after the first age, you have golden ages or dark ages. And that's it. Um, which is quite good. Heroes and legends, I've never really been into it. Monopolies and corporations, it boosts uh, trade and production later. I like that. Not really into the secret societies. If you're, a se if you're a conspiracy theorist, you might find it handy, but I find it a bit difficult to manage, actually. Tech and civic shuffles, yes, because although we can see it in the, in the table, what's coming up, I like them to be a bit randomised. Zombie defence mode is just crazy. They keep, you can kill these zombies and they just keep respawning. It's annoying. right? But that's zombies for you. <laughs> Victories, uh, I, I'm going to turn off diplomatic victory. I think, because it has a habit of interrupting your game with a, an unexpected win, <laughs> um, which I don't like. If I'm going for a science victory or religion or whatever, culture, those are my typical go-tos, then I don't want to be interrupted with a diplomatic victory. Also, I've had it happen when everybody hates me, so I think it's silly. Also, I don't want to score a victory because, again, it just terminates the game when somebody hits the right score. It's arbitrary. I want to try and actually win or lose. So for that reason as well, I turn off turn limits. There's going to be no turn limit. No duplicate civilizations, no duplicate leaders. No teams. Well, that's fine. The AI, AI doesn't team up anyway. No tribal villages. Oh, no. We have to have goody huts. Teams share visibility. Well, there are no teams. It doesn't matter. So this is the game's random seed. If you want to make a note of that. We're going to have, because it's on a large map, we're going to have this many, whatever it is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 10 sieves. Kapow. Let's find out who I'm going to be. It's random. <clears throat> I've no idea. Could be good, bad, or indifferent. If you haven't played Civilization before, this series will be quite handy for you because it will get you into it at a reasonable pace. I'm Catherine de' Medici. So... Unique land unit, unique improvement. Spies are her thing, which I don't really use much, but you never know. I'll, I guess I'll have to. Production towards medieval, renaissance and industrial era wonders. Tourism from wonders is up 100%. This, I know, provides culture, so we're looking at a culture victory, or trying for it anyway. Let's go. Let's just move this guy somewhere and see what's around. What are we looking at here? Fresh water, good. A couple of bonuses, some animals, some farming, mineable hills, some production. I guess that's a good place. If you don't know where to settle, settle where it puts you or go for one of these recommended hexes. But at the beginning of the game, I'm a little reluctant to move more than one or two hexes to get my settler settled because the AI will be settling immediately wherever it's plonked down. So it gets the jump on you slightly. So just settle that. 
choose our research. Well, let's open the technology tree. Hide the key. We don't know what's coming up. It's all been shuffled. I guess if I look back at the map, we're not going to need farming and stuff right away um, until the city's grown a bit anyway. So I'll go for mining. Okay. We'll see what all of these do as time goes on. And I'm going to... Hmm. A monument helps your city to grow, so it's important to get it fairly soon. But I'm going to get a slinger to start with and start walking these guys around. You can get a scout. They're okay. Um, I might get a scout as well. But you need a few little units in case you meet up with some of these naughty barbarians or something. Looks like the coast here. Yeah. Barbarians. Is he able to clobber them? No, not really. Major defeat, it says. So I think what I will do is just... If I put him down there and fortify him, he might... Depends whether the AI is going to come out and attack him. Major defeat. So just fortify and sit there. The AI, you get a bonus for fortifying. He's also got defensive bonus for being in some woods. And he's on some hills. So, well defended. But we need a little bit of help, I think. So, I'll, mm, I'll make another stinger since we know there's barbarians nearby. A warrior and a slinger should be enough at the beginning. See, they made a boat already. I have mining. We are working. I'm hovering over it so you can see. If your interface doesn't do that, click on the little guy down here to see where you're working. You can move them around as well if you want to micromanage your cities. He's after food and he's after this high production hex, of course. That's a, that's great. He's going to grow very quickly. Or she, I suppose, if it's Catherine de Medici. Um, what shall I do now? A granary helps you grow. So go for that. City walls would be nice at some point. I like them. You can move the map around by dragging with the left mouse button. You might have, as an option, you can have edge scrolling as well, but I have that turned off um, because I've got two screens and it, it doesn't work when you, it's a pain when you go off the, off the edge to the other screen. Um, you can also have the mouse confined to the screen as an option, but I don't do that because I want to control my recording software. So I'm using the Elgato HD60 Pro, which is a hardware card with some software interface. Now the Slinger doesn't have the range to get to him, so he's going to have to retreat a bit. And the Slinger can go in there and do them some damage. I would say explore over here now. Um, we need to find out what's going on around the city. Let's get this monument going. The monument produces culture and helps you to... See what I mean? He's coming out because he thinks he can... 
That's bad. He's going to die. <laughs> oh. Plus five combat. Oh, yes. We've researched a civic. So let's improve our combat strength against barbarians. And we'll try and get some faith. Because our faith is zero at the moment. And it's growing at the rate of zero. Science, culture, faith, money, diplomatic um, favoritism or favour, and envoys for your pol politics with the city states. So, what now? I'm afraid you're going to have to come out. You've been. Oh, not you. Oh dear. That's wrong. Okay, come back. Totally moved the wrong unit. Next. Maybe he'll come out again. Then he's for it. Let's have a look at the civics then. We did that. So where next? Um, production towards ancient and classical era units. Extra loyalty. Oh, extra production of settlers? I want that. It says 31 turns to do it, but my city will grow, so that will speed up. Yes, he's come out. Right. So, first of all, do him some damage. So, I click, I left click on the unit, then I right click on the target. There's a range of one. So it's done him some damage. Plus, this guy now has a plus five. And it's going to do a lot more damage. Hmm. I'm looking around for places to settle another city, basically. You want somewhere where there's some production and some food. Ideally some hills or something, or maybe some woods that, that's highly productive. You see, that, that also is. So, and I, I also think cities should be about four hexes apart. So one, two, three. Four, that would be a great place, but it's a wheat field, so I might stick a city on the marshland or something. Maybe. Little heart there says, stay fortified until healed. Gives me a granary, or gives me the right to build a granary, or the ability, I should say. And some other bits. Well, that's interesting. If there's a hill, you get to see further. So I like to go to hills. Okay, um, a city state. Love enter. If you send envoys to them, you get various bonuses. Um, in this case, it's a religious one, so I'll get religion-based bonuses. Religion money, as I like to think of it. So what shall I research now? Well, I don't know. City walls? Not that crucial. Maybe horses will show up if I do animal husbandry. Got him. Right. On their next turn, I can trash that barbarian camp so it will produce no more barbarians. They are often in quite good locations for cities. It's done a second boat already. What a rotter. Okay. So first of all, you can, you can get money out of the camp and leave it be. But I prefer to destroy them, to be honest. <laughs> Especially when they're near my city. And you gain some bonuses. Let's heal up a bit. I can, if you promote him, he, he gains some experience. 
I can improve his attack strength or his defense strength. I like the defense strength, to be honest. Because when barbarians have ranged units, they're devastating. <laughs> so, and the true, same is true of your enemies. Um, I'll build one scout just so we can run around. Okay. I can automate him and let him trundle off. So you see, if I was to put a city down somewhere around here, the settler lens gives me some clues. You see, the dark green is, is fresh water, which is brilliant for your cities. No water, slow growth, fast growth, medium growth. So really, I'm looking at... High production, high production. Paris might get that, but um, some jungle for chopping down, perhaps bananas, food. If I put a city there, one, two, three, I won't have a coastal city here. Very difficult. Maybe I could put a city there and a city over here. That might do. We have some little map tacks. Okay. So I'll say, maybe stick a city here. Bink. Okay. And maybe stick a city there. Okay. And while I'm at it, I can use these map tacks to try and figure out where I might put some objects like what if I were to put a university here? No, that might be better for an industrial zone. Maybe if I were to stick a university here, for example. Okay. You see how you get plus one for various things, right? So it shows you I'll get a plus one there. And maybe I could stick a commercial district down somewhere, or an industrial district here, maybe. You get bonus of swing next to district tiles or two district tiles so only plus one but if I do something like place a commercial district here ultimately sorry not a water park no a commercial district there we go okay that's plus two he should get one for being one for being adjacent to two districts but okay that's so really he should be getting another one I think but it's not showing it. Maybe I'm mistaken. <laughs> but you can get a rough plan that, that I might I might not do that. But the aim is to get a load of cities not too far apart. Because these things have a range of six hexes, so it benefits cities that are nearby. Some of them do anyway. You don't just get industrial production for, for for the city that has it, in other words. Now, more barbarians down there, you saw. A goody hut, excellent. We have to deal with them now, they're down here somewhere. towards it. A volcano perhaps? Yep. The exclamation mark means he's discovered your city and he's going to head back to his barbarian camp when the AI feels like it and let them know and then the barbarian camp will start spawning units to attack your city. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Scout, go exploring. It's 
I'm wondering if the best place for um, an industrial zone might be somewhere else. So if I add attack, like somewhere over here, no bonus. What about here against near these guys? Production adjacent district tiles, quarries, government plazas, mines, lumber mills, aqueducts, baths, canals, dams, strategic resources. You can you can leverage all of those. Now, I might say build an aqueduct here, therefore an industrial zone should be here. Actually, the aqueduct would probably have to be either on the mountain, next to the mountain, say here, or next to the river, say there. So that's probably not a great place. But then he gets an, more bonuses for being next to them. If you want, you can study those and get really good at it. <laughs> Leveraging these bonuses does make a difference over time. I'm going to go for archery. Let's look at the tree. Archery is a big improvement on slingers. If the slinger happens to kill a unit, my archery research will be speeded up. Can I have another warrior then? Okay. About time I started thinking about churning out a... a, a uh, ooh. Somebody's got a religion or something? Oh, that's my bonus from the goodie hut. I can choose a pantheon. A set of gods. Something that our little tribe would benefit from. See, we have a couple of bonus resources. Luxury resource. Bonus. I'm going to take these. Whoops, go away. Should I kill these tacks for the moment because I'm not convinced that I'm figuring it out properly? Let's go to the Pantheon. What would be good for me? <coughs> They, they give you benefits, religion gives you a benefit, for various things, like uh, being near a river, <coughs> or having bananas or something, right? Um, if there are lots of animals, pastures, you get culture. So I need to look, probably, for culture bonuses, but growth bonuses um, might help in production. Because... Production is really mega important in the game. If you can't produce stuff, you're not going to get anywhere, really. Buildings and units and so on. No matter what you're heading for. So, we don't have marshes, oases and desert floodplains. That's not much use. They may be elsewhere, but not right here. I want the Pantheon to benefit my the cities that I have right now. So there's probably not much there. Faith from quarries, food from plantations we don't have. Production towards military units, ancient ones. Um, free builder in the capital and a growth rate increased by 10%. That's good. Um, since I haven't even built a builder yet. But until you've got mining and stuff, why bother? I have mining now, so I could go for that. So, some culture. Farms on bonus resources. Could get one food and one production from that. That might be quite powerful if I could build farms over there. But I can't have that and a free builder. So I've got to have a free builder. <coughs> okay. And so faster growth as well. O of the capital city only. <coughs> but there is the builder. So, what to do? What does Paris need? It's growing a bit. 3.2 food. It's got quite good production. It's currently working 
those tiles. I don't have what it takes to improve them. I need irrigation for that. I could build a farm there. But he's working this one. You can move them around, as I say, but I'm going to go for more production. Okay, I'm going to build a mine there. He's run a long way away. Oh, there's another civilization over there, quite close to me as well. That's bad news. <coughs> okay, so plus one production there. Improves that. Who the heck is down there? What annoying person is that? <clears throat> he's from the Maori. I don't know if he's the one. So there you go. I've turned off the um, music and the speech. <laughs> By the way, that's why you can't hear him. Music because YouTube doesn't like it, and speech because I don't like it. <laughs> so let's sample his hospitality, which means it shows us where his city is, and it is the Maori there. Okay, quite close to me. That means, really, in my terms, he's got to die. He's too close to me. Oh, he's on an island, maybe not. But I should be settling down here, maybe to get in his way. Where are those barbarians? Maybe that, maybe that scout came from there and just missed me. Two charges left. Two builders in the in the icon. Okay. I don't like going for an early rush to build to kill people, so I might not. I probably won't, to be fair. Build a farm. Increases food production. So what's up with him anyway? Let's keep exploring. I certainly will need to build some cities down here. Let's let's build a settler. <clears throat> Where should I build a city down here? I can't build it in between here because he is too close to me. Which is very, very irritating. So cities over here and cities over here. We have some production here, but Paris and we'll probably get those. So somewhere down here, it's not very good for production. There's a bit there and a bit there. I can't go too close to him. If I put the settler lens up, you'll see I also would lose loyalty to him. Best I can do is stick a city there and it will grow all right, but it will not be very productive. But it might just at least capture the territory. This shows me loyalty. And it's a big reason why I've got to get rid of him. Because <laughs> the productive tiles are down here. And it's difficult if you have negative loyalty. Um, but there are horses down there as well. Mm-mm. over this way a bit more. You can go and kill him. Um, yeah, you explore up that way.
typically if um, if another sieve is near you or starts settling near you in the early game you've probably got to get rid of them somehow but that can be take a long time if you're non warlike like I tend to be when I play um, I can't build a lumber mill yet I don't have the technology so I'm just going to build another farm on here I can't do that, I don't have irrigation yet. So let's explore up here as well. Let's see what we can do. Skip the rest of the turn. He hasn't got enough movement points to get down here. with the builder. No fighting ability. Let's change policies. So I got some bonuses. So some stuff that I can do. I can have a diplomatic agreement of open borders. I can declare a war of retribution. So someone who's broken a promise and I can enforce my borders. So let's speed up the settlers. And that will have to do. There's something spawning them out down here, isn't there? I've got to send somebody else down, I'm afraid. Well, he'll die, so I'm just going to send him up to the top there. Explore over there. <laughs> I could declare war by stealing that builder. But I'm just not in a position really to do anything. I might be, but I don't know that I am. <laughs> but I should perhaps churn out a load more military units and see how we go. What's this give me? More builders? Melee and cavalry on ranged units. Heavy and light cavalry. Well, I haven't just, I haven't got any horses at the moment, but you do get flanking support. So, so if units are next to each other, they're better. Oh, and I can appoint a governor. Probably Magnus is the one because he gives you some extra growth in your cities, and he allows you, when he's suitably promoted to give you um, free set or settlers that don't lose your population. Also, so at the moment, if I chop down some trees, I'll get stuff churned out more rapidly. But he will give me bonuses such as settler building a settler doesn't destroy my population and so on. But I'll have a settler built before. Because each settler you build loses your population level. It'll go from five back down to four again. But with that promotion, that doesn't happen. I'm probably going to die. I, should. I didn't really mean to run in there, actually. But uh, the old right-clickiness was a bit too much. As soon as that's done, I'm, that's done, I'm going to start churning out more warrior, more warriors, I suppose. If I had to put a city down here, very productive, foody, fresh water. One, two, three, four. I guess we're looking at that. Let me stick a tack down to remind myself. 
That's too good too, but this is the freshwater one. So go for it. Fresh water next to a river, basically. Good spot for a university there between the two mountains. It likes universities like mountains. So let's add attack there while I think about it. Also there, but that's productive. Campus it calls it. Two bonus because of the two mountains. Okay. Just to remind me, one of the cities will do that. In theory, one city could put one there and one there, but that is a good hex. Warrior. Um, see who that is, please. There's another civilization up there. We're in trouble. can't move to attack, but he can sit there as a target. Um, city-states are like civilizations, except they, they are not interested in expanding beyond the one city. So they can't win the game. Or they're not interested in winning as such. Because... Probably they're not, they're basically not governed by sociopaths, right? I think that's what it means. They're actual, proper civilised cities. <laughs> Some of them. I guess historically they're not all like that. Oh dear. Oh well. Thank you, Settler. Now I would like to... Go and settle down there somewhere, but it's a bit dangerous, so... I had better that since there's a civilization up there, I'm going to settle here. You see, the game is recommending this place, and I understand it. But this isn't bad. So I'm going there. There's, I would normally have an archer or something with him, but I can't at the moment, so off he goes. Minor victory. Hmm. I think I'll just fortify him until he'll. And the AI will probably suicide attack him. Then I'm concerned about this settler hanging around. So let's just. At least you stick with him, okay? Provide a minimal defensive boat. There's no defense on him. How do you do? Another Muppet. We seek sympathetic allies in the fight against the hawks of war. These people are liars, so what he means is he's a warlike bastard. And he seeks sympathetic allies. <laughs> and Emperor and Great Khan, how do you do? So Guangzhou is up there, So uh, and there's an Australian city, okay. An Aussie warrior happened to find mine. So I'm pretty much surrounded by bad guys. I.e. <coughs> AI players. Go on then, send me a delegation. I should send them delegations too for diplomatic favour. Right. 
You can usually send one on the first turn and they'll accept it no matter what. Tie these two units together now. Go on, settler, keep going. So let's send him a delegation. 25 gold. Goodbye. What has he got? Some horses. Hmm. China. Delegation. Thank you. He's got some horses. Goodbye, I'll send a delegation. For luck. I don't know. Um, okay, I'm not at war at the moment, so I don't need to change any policies or anything. Clearly I should be looking at settling over here somewhere. What's the... Mm -hmm. Something like that. Maybe not that productive in terms of actual gear wheels. But at least it's, you know, surrounding him a bit. And somewhere up here, well, this settler is going to cover this this chunk. Don't know. What shall I research? If I'm surrounded by enemies, I'd better have some city walls. Um, it increases your defensive uh, abilities in the city enormously. If the city has some actual defense. I'm also going to go for some trade, so I can build trade routes, because they build roads. Traders build roads. You can't build them manually. Delegation is most welcome. So. Mm -hmm. More cities. So let's get rid of the tack. <coughs> Pardon me. So scout, head up here. Settler, settle. On the marshland, yeah. Hope I haven't ruined China's day. Right. I could possibly purchase an archer, no. I don't have, have enough money to purchase anything much. So what I should do... I'm going to put a defensive unit in there, I think. I'm feeling the need for it. Bring him back to deal with these silly barbarians from the south. Now that I know what's up there, this, the, he can wander around and have a look, I suppose. <clears throat> right click, 
to kill him, or to shoot him anyway. Nice. Let's build another warrior. the moment. There's a village there. That's Australia, okay. This is kind of looking like it might be a warlike game. I might be peaceful machinating Catherine de Medici, but I'm stuck in a situation where I'm surrounded by close up enemies. Of course, one could be friends with them, but. As in real life, um, politicians are not to be trusted, essentially. Where's that scout? There. Good stuff. Um, just stand there for the moment. We'll see what's down there before sending you down. Oh, I thought so. That's probably beatable by this guy. What shall I do? He's going to get shot at anyway, probably. Oh, Slinger has a range of one, so the Slinger would have to come out to do it, so let's tempt him out. Let's well just explore now, on your own. Let's build a granary, speed up your growth, gives you extra food. Hmm. Can't get over there at the moment. Or maybe I can get around. Karakoram. What? Why can't you go down there? The game sometimes knows more than you do. Oh, it doesn't like to do use. Well, no, yeah. I don't know. The pathing is not <laughs> perfect. Mm -hmm. oh, it's suicide by uh, by Bill. Oh, I can promote myself. Let's do it. Builder, hooray. Could be very handy. I can't build there yet, so let's build the sheep. Probably that's why it gave the long way round, because these guys are in the way. I'll just wait. 
when you have a long route across the country and somebody hundreds of miles away steps on your route, your unit says, I can't get there, and wakes up again. <laughs> What's that? Set another one down just in case. What do I need? Mm -mm. Need religion, I need universities and stuff. So, and irrigation. Obviously, you need everything pretty much, basically. I'm going to go for the science. Don't want to be left behind. It's fatal to be left behind. It can be. Good, good. Let's build another archer. <clears throat> okay. Goody Hut's gone already. Somebody else has got it, of course. Maybe I should be bringing my unit back now. Um, but curiosity killed the cat, eh? Four, one there, perhaps. I'm tempted to push him over here a bit further. Yeah, let's run away. Can't, but there we go. These units, they walk into danger. You can move them away manually. Automate them and they go straight back. This is previously flooded land, but I've got five food out of it there. I think I better send an archer down as well. how tough it's going to be, just go all in. Not doing very well, I think, in terms of uh, combat. Yeah, I've built lots of units, but it seems we have raging barbarians, or too many of them anyway. Uh, gold, production, but trade was the thing. No, it's not very good. It's not a not a super powerful unit. Let's build a government plaza, maybe. To boost adjacent. Um, thingy, what's it? The bonuses.
Oh, the goodie hut is still there. 20 faith. Awesome. Now, a great bath is like a dam. My, plus three housing, a plus one amenity. And I'm at minus two amenities at the moment. So people will be a bit annoyed. It's a world wonder. It takes a long time to build. I'm going to build a monument. Try and get the basics sorted out. A flood. Destroy that camp. Let's build some walls. Okay, you can sit there then. Looks like he's he's going to be a darned nuisance. What I might do then is bring him down. I'm gonna maybe just take that settler. And be done with it. Doesn't really matter to me what's up there, come back. Declare war. Pathetic, eh? Right, goodbye. <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> don't worry too much about annoying the Muppets. Um, they may beat you, but it's only a game, right? So, come on. Hey. Go. Capture him. Thank you. See, he doesn't like it because I'm being warlike. Goodbye. Even the gods are angry, so there you go. Go for it, right? I mean, whether it's a great place to settle... Uh, who knows? It's, it's, it's iffy, but... What I would like is to steal a builder from him while I'm at it. Can't, can't move there, but we'll see. It's a lot less trouble to steal a settler than it is to fight a war. But we are at war. <laughs> They're very well observed, these things. I mean, there are people like that. No, he's too far away. Okay. That, however, is our first hour. So I will see you in part two. We'll see how it goes. Bye for now.